and welcome to this tutorial, taking you through the fundamental controls for setting up your site plans in a Kubla Cube project. First of all, we'll look at adding a new site plan. Click plans and then add either a PDF file, a CAD file or an image file, whichever one corresponds to your site plan. So let's start by looking at the CAD files, as these tend to be easier to manage. While CAD files themselves don't store unit information, Kubla Cubed will automatically estimate the units based on the ones that you've set for your project. In many cases, this means you won't need to manually adjust the scale or position. However, it is always a good idea to verify that the estimated units are accurate. To do this, find a marked or known length, then press and hold the M key to measure the distance. Once the measured distance matches the expected value, you can be confident that the scaling is correct. If the units are off, don't worry, simply click the scale button and select the correct units from the list at the bottom. Images and PDF files do require scaling, so we can start by choosing the image or PDF file that we wish to upload. If it's a multi-page PDF, you'll be prompted to select the specific page. However, for this example, we only have a single page. Once the file is loaded, you'll see a bar on the side here with options for defining the site plan. These controls allow you to set the position and scale of the site plan, crop out any unnecessary areas such as title bars, and make shaded areas of the site plan transparent. You can see our video on cropping, colours and transparency for more information on those. While editing, you can see the other project content behind the site plan, and this can help you align different elements, but it might make it become visually cluttered. If needed, you can pop out the editing options to edit the site plan in a separate window. Pop out the site plan by clicking the arrow out button, like so, and you can maximise that. All controls remain the same in this view as they do in the model view, and to return, you just press the pop back in or the arrow in button. And there you are. The most challenging part of defining a site plan is accurately setting its scale and position. Since there's no standard for site drawings, different plans may contain varying information, which can complicate the process. The best approach to determine scale and position depends on the specific data available in the drawing. The four controls that we use are Move, Rotate, Scale and Align to Two Points. The Align to Two Points button combines the functionality of the three other controls, allowing you to use one action instead of multiple actions. Depending on your situation, you may choose to use the individual controls or the all-in-one option. First, we'll look at scaling. The method we use to scale the site plan relies on the data that you have. You might have a scale indicated on the drawing, such as this one, with a 1 to 400 at a 3 size paper. Alternatively, you might find distances on a scale bar that is marked or on the site plan. And you can use either of these to establish the scale. So click scale to begin and select your preferred option to set the scale. To use the marked scale, click by ratio here, and then we can enter the scale value. So one to 400. So remember this option does not apply to images as they lack a defined page size. So this is only applicable to use a ratio for PDF site plans. Click OK. The other option to do by length, we can show you by clicking the scale again and then use a dimension that we have on our sheet. So we can go by length and select this. Known length, I'll just click at the start and the end of the length. And this length is 103.6 okay and then it gives us the options 
When using the scale by known length tool, it can be difficult to click precisely on the exact start and end points, which may introduce inaccuracies. For this reason, if the calculated scale is close to a standard ratio, for example 1 to 400, we recommend using that instead of your input scale. However, you can accept or reject this recommendation. You can confirm the scale by locating a marked or known length and pressing and holding the M key to check the distance. And now I can see that I've scaled that correctly. So for single page site plans where you're performing an on-screen takeoff, setting the scale may be all that's required. However, if you're working with a CAD file or aligning the site plan with others that have been loaded into the project already, you'll also need to adjust its position. In some cases, rotation may be necessary first, though often the loaded site plan will be correctly oriented. If the orientation of your loaded site plan isn't ideal, you can adjust it using the rotate tool. This should be done after scaling the site plan, but before moving it. So to rotate, click rotate, and then you have these options to use the rotate clockwise or rotate anti-clockwise um, if, if it is misaligned. Alternatively, you can use the mouse to align to a north direction and change any angle that you choose on your screen. This is commonly done to align with the north arrow on a plan. Okay, so after scaling and rotating the site plan as needed, you can reposition it using the move tool. You can do this using marked coordinates or by referencing a point on the plan, which is shared with another already loaded plan. So we have this plan already in our project, which is page one, and we've set the scale already. So this site plan doesn't require any rotation. This plan has though got coordinates marked, allowing you to set the coordinate by inputting the value. We click move and click on the point. And then we can input that easting and northing. And you can check that that's done correctly. Um, using your mouse cursor, it will show the coordinates X and Y. Um, so that's fine. Now the site plan is positioned correctly as indicated by the cursor. We can then apply the same method to align a second site plan against the first one. So click OK and we'll just add that second plan. And select page two. This time the, the site plan has come in already scaled, but we can use these coordinates to move the site plan, or we can find a known mark to move it to. So we can say that I want to move this point here, which is on this site plan, over to this point here, which is the same kind of known mark. And there you can see that the plans have aligned like so. So the software has just moved the site plan's location according to where we have clicked from and where we want it to go to. The final control, aligned to two points, performs the functions of the previous three controls in a single operation. However, this can only be used when you can identify the true position of two points on the drawing. This could be two visible points on the site plans or marked coordinates in the drawings. So we'll load our first page. You may remember this drawing has marked coordinates, so we can use the aligns two points by clicking the button and clicking on the first point. Let's zoom out so we can see that coordinate. Zoom out and hold down the mouse scroll so we can then find the next, the second point that we're going to align. Okay, and like before, we've got the options of adjusting to kind of a round number or the exact number that where we put the points. Um, so we'll go to that rounded number. And that is nicely aligned. If we zoom into the curve, so we can see that that is positioned. Um, and um, if we use the M key, we can check the scale on this one. And that's great. Excellent.
So then we can import our second plan. So just click OK and add the second PDF page. So page two. OK. Like before, it's been scaled, but we need to do the, the move. But we can use the aligned two points, and this time I'll use two known points. So we'll use that same point at the top of the car park. I'll mark that on there. And then go back to the source plan. And this time we'll just use um, the parking space at the bottom. And the second point, oh, I'm slightly in. And there we are. So that's nicely aligned because the software has automatically made any necessary adjustments to align the two drawings to the specified points. If the drawing needs rotation, the aligned two points function will handle that as well but it wasn't needed in this situation. So for more information on aligning multiple site plans, you can see our video on overlaying and stitching. Finally, once you're done editing the site plan, click OK to confirm your changes and the site plan will now appear in the main window. In the plans menu, you'll see that the site plans are listed and you can see that you have these options. You can hide with either the eyeball or clicking the word hide. You can delete or you can edit your site plan and that will take you back into the menu. Okay, so you can load as many site plans as you need into your project and they will all appear in the plans list. And they can be turned on and off as required, allowing you to focus on different parts of your project. You can also watch our video on 3D layering, which can, goes into more detail about moving the site plans up and down.